I think many people over the past few months, myself included, have been rethinking a lot of life decisions. And one of the things that I've noticed is a very popular topic of conversation among the Clean My Space community and the broader internet community is the topic of minimalism. Now, this is something that we have been talking about for a long time. And just to be clear, I'm not one of those people with three things in my closet and four things in my house. I like stuff but I'm just really mindful about stuff. So I've incorporated a lot of minimalism into my life, but in a way that I feel is manageable. So in this video, I wanna share some of those tips with you. I know we've talked about it before on the channel, but we've brought more new ideas to the table, sharing how you can bring minimalism to your life, whether you wanna be someone with just a few things at home, or you have a lot of things and you want a starting point. So let's get into it. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you think you could declutter some things from your life, from the past year. A simple way to introduce minimalism into your home is to think about your surfaces as spaces that can be mostly clear. When I was growing up, my mom had this rule where we couldn't have more than three things on our surface if we wanted our room to be considered clean. And that is something that her mom passed down to her. Now, I thought that this was austere when it was first introduced to me, but I have to say, you know, the more you are deliberate about what you put on any particular surface, the nicer your place will look because it doesn't necessarily mean just because you have an empty surface that you need to fill it up with things. That look might make sense for some people, but if you are trying to bring minimalism into your life, less and well curated is definitely more. I first learned about Buy Nothing Groups in Real Simple Magazine. They had an article about it and I was obsessed with the concept. So the way it works is like this. You go on Facebook, you type in Buy Nothing Group for your area and something should pop up because they are all over the world. And the way they function is like this. You go on the group, if you have something that you wanna get rid of, you post it up, obviously not garbage, like a good thing. And then if somebody needs something, they can pick it up from you free of charge and vice versa. If there's something that you need, you can actually just post it up on the buy nothing group. And if someone has it, they can give it to you. You can just go and pick it up. I love this for so many reasons. Not only does it build community, but it also helps to repurpose or give items a second life that would otherwise be collecting dust in your home. Now, this brings me to a question that I have because I'm a big fan of upcycling and sort of keeping things out of the waste stream. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see a video uh, about some research I've done on that topic, different ways that you can incorporate that into your life and into uh, your family or your community because I'm really into this idea and I'd love to share more with you if you guys are interested, so let me know. I have never been one of those people that has felt an affinity for budgeting. I don't love math, I don't love accounting, but I've gotta say that keeping an eye on your budget really does help minimize your spending on unimportant things. And the more that you can pay attention to where your money is going every month, the more you'll start to see where you're actually wasting money. This is a little bit of a slap in the face at first. For me, I actually spend a lot of money on food, like takeout food or you know, food that I buy with all of the intent of cooking up a beautiful recipe and then time runs out and I can't make it anymore. I waste a lot of money on food, that's what I'm trying to say. So whether it's food or whether it's household decor or clothing, if you start to parse through your spending every month, credit card or debit statements, and you see where your money's going, you can start to tweak how much money you budget or allow yourself to spend on those items every month. Actually, Chad and I are working on a budget this month, which feels overwhelming, but it feels like the right thing to do. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to get better at saving our money and actually using it toward long-term goals. So if you're someone who kind of spends a lot, but you really enjoy spending, maybe reconsider your budget and then also start to think about enjoying saving and start doing some math, crunching some numbers, and see what perhaps instead of spending $100 a month on frivolous items would add up to in five or 10 years from now if it was invested. Whether it's for you or for someone else, think about spending your money in terms of buying experiences and collecting those 
rather than buying things which can or cannot work out for you. You might buy something that sits there and collects dust or you know outlives its useful life fairly quickly whereas an experience is a memory that will last a lifetime and can open you up to new perspectives and can also challenge you to do new things. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, my mom was all into experiences for birthdays so one year she took my sister and I for scuba diving lessons which like I'm not a daredevil by any sense and I would think scuba diving would be very overwhelming but it pushed me out of my comfort zone and I became a certified deep diver so I will be forever grateful for that gift and another one that she did for us uh, one year she took us on a hot air balloon ride so we went all the way down and then we went all the way up and that was so scary but it was also an incredible experience and had my mom just said oh I'm gonna buy you that shirt that you wanted that shirt would have come and gone, but that experience is in my head and my heart and will last me for a lifetime and really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And things that push me out of my comfort zone are priceless. I was thinking through how I spent many of my weekends as a young girl and a teenager growing up and even how Chad and I would spend time before Riley was born. And that was at a mall. It was at a mall. It's so embarrassing to say. I can't even say it with a straight face. I was a legit mall rat when I grew up. <laughs> and Chad and I really enjoyed just going to a mall and walking around. And inevitably, we'd always end up picking something up that we thought we needed and we'd bring it home. And setting up your social life around consumption feels fun, but also we're told that it's fun, right? But there are so many other ways that you can spend quality time with people that actually don't involve being at a shopping place. Now, all that to say, I can't imagine anytime soon we'll all be hanging out at malls and shopping, but either way, even when things do open back up or as you go through life and kind of consider the way you want to spend your time with the people you love, try to take consumption out of the picture. If you've watched any Clean My Space videos before, you probably know that I am someone who will be the first to tell you when I think you should spend good money on a really important thing. And I will also be the first person to tell you when you do not need to spend money and when you can make your own thing. And I actually firmly believe that cleaning is one of those spaces where we don't have to go out and buy a ton of stuff. In fact, that's a big mistake I see people make. They run out to the cleaning aisle and they're stocking themselves up with every single product. And the truth of the matter is, you know from watching Clean My Space videos, you don't need a lot to accomplish an amazing clean in your home. So I'm a big proponent of making what you can, where you can, saving money, space, and things that way, and upcycling where it makes sense, and that way you have more resource, more budget to actually go out and buy the stuff that you really do need. Editing high volume items has been crucial in our house because we love magazines. I know you can get digital versions. We just love print magazines because they're nice. You can sit on a couch or in a bath or in bed and read them. And we get several magazines to the house every month. The problem, if you're getting a few of them every month, is that they pile up real quick, just like kids' artwork, just like books, if you're a big reader. You probably have something in your house that is a high volume item like this. And like I said, the problem becomes when you don't edit these down. So the way that we do that with magazines or artwork is as follows. First of all, we have someone who we hand all of our magazines off to who loves getting a fresh supply of month old magazines. So that works really well for us. Now, anything that I want from that magazine, whether it's a photo or a resource or a recipe or something like that, I will actually just grab my phone, snap a photo, and then I have an album in my phone where I can just put ideas and resources from magazines. This is a trap I know I fall into and I know lots of you guys fall into as well. And that is second guessing yourself. After you've looked at something, so you've gone through the decluttering process and you look at something and you're like, maybe I still need this. And then you just leave it on your counter, your table, your surface. And then the problem is if you've already deliberated like that, the probability of you actually picking that thing up and using it again are slim. Like if you even questioned it the first time, you're probably not in need of that thing. 
A recent example for me was a hair product. I picked it up. Hair products for me are so guilt ridden because you use them once and if they suck, you never want to use them again. So here, I bought this hair product. It was sitting in my bathroom. I'm like, maybe I'll use it again, even though it turned my hair into a nest. So I had to look at it uh, after second guessing it. I looked at it, I think it was about a week ago and I was just like, I'm done with this. And I got rid of it. But had I just made that decision initially after testing the product and realizing that it didn't work for me, had I just gotten rid of it, I wouldn't have had to keep it on my counter for several months and waste that space. So when you get your thing, or if you have a thing and you realize I'm not feeling it, but I'm sort of feeling unsure, just don't second guess yourself. Put it in your waste station. The waste station is that pile that you have in your home where it's just kind of waiting to be donated or sold or taken out of your house. And don't think about it again. It's done. You might have heard of the one in one out rule, which essentially means anytime you bring something into your home, you get rid of something and that helps keep buildup and clutter at bay. But at Clean My Space, we've kind of re-engineered things because we know that sometimes people who struggle with decluttering might need an extra strategy to help them get started. So we have the one in two out rule, which effectively allows you to bring one new thing in and helps you declutter twice as much each time. So rather than maintaining status quo, you actually are hacking away at the amount of stuff you have. So it's quite simple. You go shopping, you bring one thing into your home, and then you have to challenge yourself to go around the house and find two things that you get rid of. Being a conscious consumer means that you can actually vote with your dollars. So if you look at the political or the environmental climate, or if there's a cause that's meaningful to you that you really want to support, vote with your dollars. So do your research before you have to buy something. If whatever item it is that you're looking for is available uh, from a company that supports something that's meaningful to you, spend your money there instead. For us, one of the things that uh, we've noticed in our family is that we go to online marketplaces and buy things because they come quickly and easily. I don't need to name names, but you guys are smart. You know, you can pick up what I'm putting down. That said, we've actually decided to start looking for more local sources and more sources that have meaning to us for making our purchase decisions. We've really dug into supporting small local businesses during this time. That's been really important to us. And there have been some other causes that have been important to Chad and I as well. So we've been taking our money out of those big online marketplaces and actually putting it into other economies and other businesses that we feel uh, are really important to us. So I would just say, as you think about your budget and the way in which you're spending your money and buying better quality items, think about where you wanna buy them from so that those companies can support the causes that are important to you. The spaces that we live in are dynamic. They're always changing. We're, you know, changing decor, changing paint color, and that's great. The one thing to keep in mind if you want to maintain that sort of minimal lifestyle is to not worry about an empty space. If you have a shelf and it's empty, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. Or if you have a cupboard or a drawer that's empty, don't worry about it because a lot of people feel like, oh my gosh, as soon as that thing's empty, now I can put this in here or now I have to figure out nine things to put on that shelf. And the truth is you don't need much to make a space look beautiful and sometimes less is more. So if you do see an empty space or a sparse space, don't be intimidated by it. Try to embrace it. In a world where dollar stores and buying lots and lots and lots of things feels pervasive, I'm actually a big fan of buying less things that cost more so that I only need to buy them once and they're beautiful and they work and I love them. Quality over quantity and form and function. That's what I think about when I make a purchase decision. Now, growing up, you know, I was so budget conscious and I didn't, you know, want to spend a lot of money on something, but I've really changed my tune because I realized when I buy something that's inexpensive, not because it doesn't cost a lot, inexpensive as in the quality of the item is bad, it's poorly made, it doesn't last and it doesn't look great. But if I actually spend more on a well-made thing and I buy it less, so, you know, three shirts instead of 10, uh, I actually prefer that because 
I feel like that item is gonna last me longer, it's gonna look better, it's gonna hold up, and uh, it does what I need it to do. So for me, and the way I think a lot of minimalists look at the way that they consume is quality over quantity and form and function. I think the fallacy with minimalism is that people think it's sort of a one-time event where you go through, you get rid of everything in your home, and now you're a minimalist. And that actually isn't the case. Minimalism to me is sort of an evolutionary process for each individual. Everyone takes it differently and everyone has a different idea of what it means for them. You know, if you used to have a lot of stuff in your house, it might not feel reasonable or real for you to have very few things, but minimalism might mean that you've halved your stuff and now you live in a much more free and airy space because that feels good for you. So all I will say is this, first of all, don't Think that if you're taking this on, it has to look one certain way. It's gonna look the way that you need it and you deem it needs to look for you. And secondly, it's not a one-time event. It's something that's ongoing. So if you've committed to living with less, it's not like you just declutter a whole bunch of stuff and that's that. It's gotta be something that you maintain. Kind of the way that somebody who makes a lifestyle change with diet or exercise would have to maintain that on a regular basis as well. All of this talk about minimalism brings me to this week's comment question, which is, how has 2020 made you think about all of the stuff in your home? I assume you've been spending more time at home lately and you've probably been looking at or maybe ignoring this stuff in your home because you're home so much. So I'm just curious how this year has affected you and if you're thinking or rethinking your relationship to the stuff in your home and perhaps if you're considering minimalism or you want more stuff or you just want to change everything in your house. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you want to see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. The two of us are at Clean My Space and our amazing microfiber products are at makers.clean. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And if you want to learn more about Makers Clean microfiber products, you can click this button right over here. There is a button down there that lets me know you care. So click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.